Trevor Charles Forsyth Hancock, 15th of January 1953. I was born in Bensdale in Gippsland in Victoria. And um, it's an interesting how the local cemetery down there, um, I can walk around and see a, a generations going back five, um, which is a little bit special, I think. And at, Perhaps that drives me within what I do, that continuity and contact with the past, I think, is most important to all of us. Um, <clears throat> on my uh, paternal grandfather came from Scotland, and um, on my mother's side, though, English. Oh, well, I guess it's, it's always been a story of... Um, brave, bold people who came to the other side of the world with nothing and were given nothing except some contacts to survive and back then that was the only way you survived. Um, <clears throat> there was absolutely no help from anybody and most were in the same boat. I lived what I call a Huck Finn existence, carefree, um, a, a large family, enormous support, um, and felt nothing of just heading off for the day. And if you felt hungry at lunchtime, call into grandparents or an aunt or uncle and have lunch and keep riding your bike until you found some other adventure. Before the time of um, mobile telephones, where everybody needs to know where everybody else is every second of the day. It was carefree and life was full of adventure and you'd get home absolutely worn out at night to home cooking and a bath and into a warm bed with a hot water bottle. And the other valuable thing that was here, this is before we came across uranium and diamonds and um, iron ore and all this sort of thing. They only found mother of pearl up in Broome. So they used the mother of pearl and carved it into flowers and other different things and put it in the gold. And this is fairly unique to Western Australia. Equally so, um, wrestling and killing tiger sharks was quite a fashionable thing. So they used the teeth of the tiger sharks, put it in jewellery and sent it home to England as a special prize. And you can imagine a lady walking down um, one of the main streets in Liverpool and Birmingham wearing a brooch with a tiger shark tooth in it. It would have been quite foreign to those who lived in the Midlands. This is Lola Montez. Lola Montez was an attractive young woman, mistress of several no members of nobility in Europe. She decided to come to Australia and she used to do the spider dance for the miners. And um, she had many skirts and she'd lift up her skirts searching for the spider. And the more she lifted her skirts, the more the gold miners would throw nuggets of gold at her to lift the skirts higher. When she left Australia, she left a very wealthy woman. She never had to use a shovel. All she had to use were attractive legs to make the gold. Some lovely little treasures. Here's a little egg cup. Um, and an egg cup must be a, a revelation for so many young people now. They wouldn't even know what an egg cup was. Um, think of the joys that that brought. Um, and uh, this was made for Parliament House in Western Australia and um, stolen by one of the politicians or one of their um, friends or family members who no knew nothing else but stealing to achieve things in life. This is dated 1852, it's an engraving of Perth. And what they did, <clears throat> the West in particular, Western Australia, there, there are very few artists who came over here and painted, unlike Eugene von Garrard, who went around Victoria and he'd go to farmhouses, the great established farmhouses, stay with them for two weeks and um, to pay for his board and lodging, he would do a wonderful painting of the property. Um, but we didn't have that money here in the state. So what they'd do, the Illustrated London News and other publications in the UK would send somebody over to sketch what was going on. In fact, in London, before photography and that sort of thing, if there was a fire, they'd some, send somebody out to sketch what was going on. He'd race back to the office and an engraver 
um, would then engrave it, originally on a wooden block. This is what the people in the UK who picked up newspapers would see of Western Australia. They'd see this amazing, struggling little settlement called Perth. And they also used it as a way of trying to get people to invest in the colony as well. Invest in the West. Yeah. This is the time when you should have bought land along St George's Terrace. <laughs> they forget that just so recently, the struggle of those early Europeans in establishing a settlement in Western Australia. Um, they arrived here virtually with nothing, so axes and hammers and this sort of thing. They were desperate for food. It was a total struggle right up until gold was found in the later part of the 19th century. And until then, life was just total struggle. And even in the early part of the 20th century, we had two major depressions. One after the Great War, when the flower of Australian youth was wiped out. Appalling stuff where families would have two sons, both went off to the war and both never returned, leaving the family absolutely in shattered condition. So that was just recent. And in a, in a depression, there was no government support. If you didn't have money, you literally had to go into the bush and kill rabbits to survive. Or else you'd get, you might be able to help somebody out and they might give you some vegetables. If you had any gold on you, a wedding band, the men would sell the wedding band for a few pounds to try and get some, some food for the family. But they, they absolutely had to survive. Many lived in appalling conditions. I mean, we just couldn't imagine what it was like living in, living in tanks and getting bits of sheet iron and this sort of thing. And that was just, that was our grandparents' time. And it is so important. And you know, that wonderful saying, if we don't understand and respect history, we are destined to repeat it. And I just hope we don't repeat a lot of those things. In our small town, um, we had a, a Church of England, and a Presbyterian Church, and a Catholic Church. And um, strangely enough, even up until the 60s and 70s, there was a strong divide between Catholics and, and Anglicans or Catholics and Protestants. However, I recall there was a, a lady there, Mrs. Hammerstrong, who um, was of little means and, and lived in a small cottage and looked after her ailing brother. And she would earn extra money on her bike. She had a, a, a cane basket on the front and she had one of those Hoover floor polishers with a two wheel brush system up there. And that fitted neatly in her basket. And she'd ride around with this Hoover polisher sitting in the basket with a wrap around apron on her. And um, she would earn the money from people who could afford to pay her cleaning their house. But for those who didn't have money, she would go and clean their house without cost and without fanfare or anything like that. And the same woman would att attend the Church of England. And because she had little money and couldn't put money in the plate, what she did was go and clean the church each week quietly. And that was her contribution to the church. And my mother posed the situation to me who was the greater Christian in town? 